Hey Taurus, it's me Stormy and here is your horoscope for October 2018. And Taurus, before we jump in here, keep in mind that you can still take advantage of the 2018 holiday sale that is going on. Click in the description box down below. It allows you to book appointments in October, November, December, and January. So you wanna look over the end of the year or the beginning of the year, we can get you taken care of, okay? All right, Taurus, into the month we go. Now your ruling planet is going to be going retrograde. And here's the deal. When it's your ruling planet, I don't care if it's going retrograde, in your sign, out of your sign, you feel it. There's a feeling of it. When Venus goes retrograde and I'm a Taurus, I, it's like my mojo slides off a little bit. I'm like, oh my God, my sexy's leaving. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the magnetism I feel, the full power I feel is just not there. So you may be experiencing a little bit of that, but this is not a reason to be like, F October. That's not the business at all. October is busy. There is still stuff to be done, okay? Now, the retrograde we're going to be experiencing, Scorpio is going to, excuse me, Venus is going to go retrograde in Scorpio, which is just the opposite energy for you. So your seventh house. So we're going to definitely be focusing, looking at relationships. Now, if you haven't watched my Venus retrograde video, please make sure you check it out in the playlist, okay? But when Venus is retrograde, it's like any other planet's retrograde. We're going back. We're going to look backwards. We're going to review things from the past. Venus is about that money, and she's also about love and romance and relationships, sensuality, the way that you express your beauty, and the way that you express your affection. So when I say relationships this month, I want you to not just think romance. This is not just romance. Wherever you have conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships, you're going to need to relook at if these are being nurtured. Are you being nurtured? Are you being fed? Are you feeding your relationships? Because it's not just how's everything affecting you. Are you showing up in people's lives? This includes your business partners, your friends, your children, right? What's the nature of these relationships? Also, of course, we're gonna, like I said, look at your relationship with your finances. There's been a lot going on, a lot of changing. Uranus is also in Taurus, so it's shaking you out of your comfort zone and the lights are on Taurus. It's time to take a look around. Retrogrades are infamous for bringing back past lovers. Now, here's the thing. It could bring back an old relationship, an old ram romance. It could actually bring the person back, but could also just bring the memory or the thought back because it's asking you to re-look at it and to re-look at your value, right? Where's your self-esteem aligned around all of these things? So this is what you're going to be working on this month, no doubt. And if it really does feel like your sexy ran off, it will be back. I promise you, it will come back, but use your retrograde well, okay? All right, let's jump into this month so I can get you out and enjoying it, all right? Right here at the beginning of the month on the 3rd, I think that this is important. We've got Mercury, who's actually in the sign of Libra, who's going to be in a square to Pluto, who's over in Capricorn. Now, why I think that this is important is because Mercury and Libra is very relationship oriented. It is the nature of Libra energy, but this works in your sixth house, okay? And then we've got Pluto over here in Capricorn rocking the ninth house space for you. In a square, a square is putting you in a box and it's putting you under pressure so that you will take an action to explode out of that box. You don't want to be in that box anymore. You need to change. So it may create even a little bit of crisis. So there could be a relationship um, with your health and your expansion, your career and your expansion and education and things like that. So you do want to pay attention to what's happening. This could also be something around mental health or mental expansion. If you've been trying to put that book out of there or launch a project or something, this may have you quieted for, for just a little bit of time here, okay? But have no fear because you get some mojo back with that as we move into the month, all right? When we get to the fifth here, we've got Venus taking that retrograde, like I said, over here in the sign of Scorpio to begin with. So lighting up the seventh house space. Now, the other thing about this retrograde I want to point out is that Scorpio, besides just being your opposite energy, so putting emphasis on relationships, Scorpio is a very quiet, very jealous, very possessive, very intense energy, and that's not all bad, okay? So some of the things that may be coming up for you are looking at where you're showing up there. Are you being too possessive in relationships? Relationships. Are you 
are you still stuck on the Taurus that you used to be? Because that Taurus is not going to be able to show up effectively in your life anymore. It's time for the next version. And it's also about some downtime, right? If you need privacy, if you need downtime, if you need to think and to gather your thoughts and whatever it is that you need to do, this retrograde may be helping you see that. And because it is relationship oriented, it may have to do with a partner. Maybe you need a break from your business partner. You're like, okay, look, you handle that. I, I need to be over here and make sure that this relationship is efficient for us, okay? So keep that in mind. This is a lot about privacy. Scorpio values privacy. So, you know, here's my other thing. I'll just throw this in there. Are you keeping secrets in your romance or your finance? Because if so, this is going to need to bring that to the surface. We need to heal that. We need to heal that, move into a space of truth and move forward. Okay, then we get over here to the 8th and we've got the new moon happening in Libra. Okay, we had that square at the beginning of the month. Let's just dust our dust the shoulders off. It's fine. We've got a new moon here and the new moon is where we're going to plant these seeds of intention for new beginnings, new experiences. Um new life to be created here. And with it being in Libra, this is your sixth house energy. So the main idea that we've got going on with a new moon being in Libra energy is to look at our equilibrium. Are you out of balance somewhere in your work? Are you out of balance towards somewhere in your health, including your mental health, right? Does your diet, routine, your daily um, living schedule and routine, does it need some new fresh life? right? Is this a time where maybe you're in a space of a little bit more charity or volunteer work or something like that? Is it all you and you need to balance that out and get some more um, volunteer and giving time in your life? The question here that I would pose for you is where can you plant new seeds of intention to bring things into a, a better equilibrium, an equal state in your life, right? But just know the sixth house, this could also be fresh new relationships with coworkers or collaborations as well. So if you don't have a job, if you are retired, if that's the situation, look at how this can affect and affect and impact your daily routine, okay? Where can you breathe new life into it? On the 10th, we've got Mercury entering into Scorpio. Scorpio is getting busy. It's getting packed up there, okay? So again, putting some really good energy into your 7th house. Now, Venus is retrograde up there. Mercury joins the game. And Mercury in Scorpio, you're going to have deep conversation. You're going to have a conversation from a place of depth, which you've got a retrograde up there. You've got to look back at some stuff around your relationships and your money. You need to have some honest conversation. And Mercury is not in retrograde yet, so it's, it's facing front. It's got your full power, full blessing. It's ballsy. It's in the sign of Scorpio. So this helps you to speak up and to be rational and to be honest about some things that are rising to the surface. You may also be getting some information that comes out of a secret place, right? Maybe you find out some information, some details are uncovered or something like that. But whatever it is, it's seeking to move conversation and thinking and projects forward, okay? Now, on the uh, 23rd, we've also got the sun jumping up there into Scorpio. So look, this house is hot, okay? Scorpio is a hot energy. So it's relationships, relationships, relationships work <laughs> for you as we're traveling through October. Wherever the sun is at, you're going to want to shine. You're going to want to create light, heat, life, and vitality. So that's what's happening with the sun joining everybody and their sister up here in Scorpio. So trust me, in your relationships, you will be seeking improvement. You will be seeking forward motion because you want the best that you've got right here where the sun is glowing, okay? It'll also help to illuminate if things are in the shady space. Now, on the 24th, we've got a full moon happening in your sign, lighting up this first house space. So I told you in the beginning of this video, the Taurus that you used to be is not gonna be efficient and effective to move into the next phase of your life. It just won't work. So at the full moon, the full moon says we need to end something, acknowledge something, or make some adjustments. And it's to you. It's to you. It's to who you are. You're ready to step out, shoulders high, saying things with your chest out, speaking up for some new realities that you've come to, right? New things that you want in your life. You're not up for the games and work. You're not up for the games and relationships. And as a matter of fact, besides just not being ready for the games, 
there is a life that you have been transforming into and I think this is a courageous full moon for you. I think this is a full moon that helps you take that step forward. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now also being in the first house, one of the things I think of is maybe you're also ready to present yourself differently to the world, right? Maybe you've got a new look coming, you're transforming your body, your self-image, your self-identity, your external environment could be changing as well. You might go home and be like, I can't have these sheets anymore. I need something more luxurious as if a Taurus needs any more luxury, right? <laughs> but whatever it is, you could be making these outward changes as well. But whatever it is, it will create a shift here. So if you feel like you're shifting, that's fine. If you feel like you're ready to represent different, that's fine. It's time for it and it's totally okay. All right. When we get to the 26th of the month, we have got the sun in a conjunction with Venus who's up there in Scorpio because before the sun just enters into where everybody's at, but she's not actually in conjunction with anything. So now she's in conjunction with this Venus that is in retrograde. So this makes me believe for you, your social relationships are going to take a shift as well, which is phenomenal. You have got to bring new people into your tribe, into your space as you're putting yourself out there differently in whatever that capacity is. You're also bringing new life and new connection and new information into your world and this is how we expand this is how we change how we transform how we get to the next place right whether this be you've just had a baby and you take a parenting class okay now you've got more people and information in your world you've graduated from school it's time to become a part of the alumni association you're retired and you decide that you're gonna go join a group of people who take trips I mean whatever it is for you your social life gets to take an honest good, sincere change here, which is beautiful. So I love that for you. All right, on the 31st, we've got a couple things happening. First of all, Mercury is going to move and move into the sign of Sagittarius. This creates open-mindedness. Beautiful, beautiful open-mindedness. The things that you saw before, I'm telling you, you guys, it's like, yes, in metaphysical studies and tarot and astrology and all of this, it's like, oh, you have to shed and be your authentic self. Yeah, okay, all right, fine. But here's the thing, with these energies, as they move, it's a slow peeling that happens for us humans. Transformation happens in teeny tiny bits that later turn into big pieces that we usually couldn't honestly see fully how it was going to come out in the outcome. And this Mercury energy here, which is lighting up your eighth house space, by the way, is going to create an open-mindedness and expansion. And this is beautiful because it's in the most intimate piece of your chart. So you're willing to expand in intimacy in letting someone else see into you in your joint connections. Maybe you're going back and you're making some decisions that are very savvy, very rational on how to take care of debt. Maybe you've got some astrological study or some tarot study coming up, psychic stuff, counseling, any of that. Mercury opens your mind to the road of possibility. So you come from narrow to something that really has a lot of space in it. And I also think that it's very good for you because it helps you in conversation with people that you already have joint connections with. So very nice. Also on the 31st, what we've got is Venus shifting out of that Scorpio energy and starting to back up into Libra. And as we travel through November, we'll talk about it then, but we're going to start to see Venus work retrograde in Libra. So in that sixth house space for you, and we will talk so much more about that as we roll into November, but you just want to be aware that it's going to take that shift from Scorpio back into Libra. Okay. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Please feel free to let me know what you think about the new camera, the background, all of this good stuff. Change is, change is on, on the run for this little Taurus over here. So, and I hope you guys like it and are benefiting from it, okay? All right, don't forget to take advantage of your 2018 holiday gift. I love you guys so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the weeklies and, of course, in next month's video. Bye, guys.